customers of Room who were left hanging without titles to their car for months, six months, nine months, a year, or even more have been fighting back. I'm Kevin Newper. I'm an attorney at the law firm of Newper & Covey, and I'm here today to explain to y'all what's been going on, how have these Room customers been fighting back the, uh, against the company to get their titles, get compensation for what happened, and what is the status, what, what's been going on with this uh, this. Uh, mass arbitration is what is what's called against Vroom. So if you don't know what went on with Vroom and went on with these other online car dealers over the last couple of years, you're lucky if you didn't buy uh, from one of these people because a lot of people got into a lot of trouble trying to buy online cars. Uh, what was happening is that many, many people who bought cars from Vroom, from Carvana, from other online dealers that were kind of new, that were trying to grow really fast, um, the customers were frequently not getting the title to their car. And it would be for long, ridiculously long periods of time. You're supposed to get the title under most states, uh, and definitely Texas, where Vroom is based. Uh, the law says that's supposed to be something that happens in 30 to 45 days. Uh, it's not supposed to go on for six months, nine months, a year. And when that happens, the Texas law puts pretty severe penalties on dealers who do that. And Vroom was one of several online car dealers who, um, in this time period, were trying to grow. And, and basically, they tried to grow way too fast and were not capable of doing what they were promise were promising to people and ended up really putting a lot of people in a lot of problems and uh the basic sort of backstory for why these online car dealers did this and had this problem, and this happened with Carvana too. So it was the, these these two uh, car dealers, Carvana and Vroom, uh, were in kind of a race. So there'd been this hype about who was going to be the Amazon for car dealers. You know, you, you buy a car at a local car dealer, and there were a lot of people with uh, sort of investing in Silicon Valley um, with into this idea of there this could be done online, that you could buy your car with one click without going to uh, a car dealership and it could be shipped to you from anywhere in the country and it would be just like Amazon. And the idea was whoever got there first, whoever grew the biggest, the fastest would be the Amazon. That would be that one one website that everybody goes to to buy their car because we'd all hear about it. It'd, it'd kind of be the biggest one. It'd drive out all the competition and then they'd have kind of a monopoly uh, over the car, business, the, the car business in general, really, dealer, dealer business in general. So these companies were trying to grow so fast. Investors were dumping money into it. They were losing money often on the sales of the cars. If it sounds kind of crazy, they just they wanted to be the biggest, the fastest, because then they would push out all the others, and everybody would know about them. And if you're Amazon, Amazon lost money for a number of years. And uh, investors were still like, nope, that's a good idea. Keep going, keep going, and look where Amazon is now. So in the long run, that's great if you do that and have a successful business. The problem is you have to follow the law when you're doing it. And the law was really not followed with respect to a lot of different people because the people, when they're not getting their title, that is a huge problem. It's not like buying a book or buying a uh, anything on, on like a television or something. Like you're, if you don't, your television doesn't come or whatever, your life doesn't get ruined. People who do not get the title to their cars in a prompt and timely fashion can't drive them anymore. And this is something I didn't really realize uh, until starting these, uh, to do these arbitrations uh, and some lawsuits against Vroom, uh, really how damaging that is to someone's life to not get the title to their car. Um, there are people who had their cars impounded uh, because that's what happens, right? The police pull you over. You don't. You can't prove you own the car. They, in many states, they'll just impound the car, and you can't drive it anymore until you show you're the owner with a legal title. Um, you can get tickets that are very expensive. You can even get arrested in some states. So people who don't get their title after a certain period of time have a hunk of metal that they are not legally allowed to drive. Now imagine if you're living paycheck to paycheck. You can't just go buy another car. You can't just go pay for a rental. I mean, think of how much the rental cost would be to just get a rental for nine months. Um, you are in a world of hurt. You can lose your job. That can ripple through, and then you can lose your apartment, your house, um, everything, if you can't work, right? So if you can't drive, most many people, if they can't drive, they can't work, their life falls apart. And uh, so this is very serious, and it was happening to many, many people. We have several hundred clients on, on this, just from Vroom alone, and that doesn't include clients we have on Carvana, clients we have, uh, this wasn't just happening with these dealers, it's, it's been happening with a lot of local dealers too, have really let their standards slide over the last couple of years. And it's not okay. It's something where there are legal remedies to, uh, to do this. And um, the first thing you may think is, well, I'll just sue them. Uh, that actually was made very hard because uh, companies like Carvana and Room and really every other company in the country now has um, put, put little uh, clauses in the contract that nobody reads that say, you waive your right to sue me. You have to go to something called arbitration instead. Arbitration is like a private lawsuit. It occurs before a lawyer. Um, sometimes there used to be judges or former judges who do this. 
Um, that lawyer um, will act as a sort of semi-judge. They're, they're called an arbitrator. Um, it's a much shorter process. It doesn't go on as long as the lawsuit. It um, it doesn't have as much uh, what they call discovery, where you sort of go under oath and testify or you get a bunch of documents. You do some of that, but it's not anywhere near as much as would happen in a court. Um, but your rights are restricted. And so a lot of people were just kind of, what do we do? Um, our firm stepped in and took on several hundred of these these claims, and we're still taking cases on this where uh, the, the volume has died down a lot, but people still have problems. You know, any car dealer, even if you're the best car dealer in the world, you're going to have transactions that go wrong. But you shouldn't be having hundreds and hundreds of people, and I think it's probably more like thousands. You, you know, we, you don't know the true extent, but if several hundred people have called us, you know, how many are out there in general who didn't call a lawyer or who don't know that they could call a lawyer and, and get compensation for this? Um, it's it's not okay to have that many people doing it. And Room has even their CEO has acknowledged in a public statement in in one of their earnings calls that this is never okay for even one person to have this happen. Um, so. What's going on with this? What what did we do with the mass arbitration? We've gotten a lot of news media attention on this, and so I want to walk you all through some of what has been said publicly and can be said publicly about it and kind of how this stuff works in general and how it's working for people who were victims of room and who had their transaction go wrong either with a tiling issue or getting a lemon or, or anything like that. Uh, you know, you, you do have legal rights as a consumer. So you can see this is an article that was on Yahoo News, and it made it through uh, the, the news stations were covering this, where this mass arbitration is what it's called that we're doing through our law firm. And uh, what is a mass arbitration? So you might have heard of a class action. That's when one person goes into court and tries to represent a large group of people um, who may not even know the lawsuit exists and get, and get money that goes back to them. Now, a mass arbitration is something different. So what... Lawyers like me who do consumer cases were confronted with and have been confronted over the last couple of years with, okay, um, all these companies, they don't want to be in a class action that, you know, if they can get you all to waive your rights to a class action or waive your rights to go to court, then basically they just don't get sued. The reality is nobody, like say there's like a $4 uh, price issue or something. Most, if it hits a million people, how many of them are going to sue over four dollars? Um, technically, they could take that. There's a lot of consumer protection laws that let attorneys win fees for it. But if it's just four dollars, like who cares? Um, that, that's what most people think. And so the com the company's like, great. I I just took if a million people times four dollars, four million dollars, a lot of money. No one can sue me unless they all want to go one by one, and they won't. And so I can just do what I want. And the arbitration is kind of the idea. That's what a lot of companies have done to try to uh, avoid this. It's, arbitration is not necessarily bad, right? It, it's we a lot of consumers, lawyers don't like it. We do very well in it. Um, what we do to get around this is basically you pick a company that has been doing something that is wrong and not giving people titles to their cars is very wrong to a lot of people, and they've all been injured by a lot. If it's six months, nine months, you can't drive your car. That's a pretty serious injury. If you still don't have the title to your car, that's a serious injury. If you get in a crash and you don't have title to your car, your insurance company probably won't pay you. They'll sit there and say, you don't get uh, money. So on top of all the impoundment, the risk of arrest, this all this stuff, it's real bad. It's, it's a very serious damage to someone's life. A lot of distress, a lot of stuff that they're going through. So what you as an attorney do is you just collect you know, hundreds of people. You just start taking on different people and you get where your firm can manage uh, just many, many cases at once in these arbitrations. And you just keep hit, hitting the same company over and over and over with all these different consumers. And it kind of acts as like a critical mass, right? When you have one person suing, okay, the company's looking at that going, even in arbitration, they're like, oh, maybe that's, you know, how much does it really cost the lawyer's fees? Um, for a lawsuit, it, they might spend $100,000, $200,000 on a small value lawsuit. For an arbitration, they might be spending fifteen, twenty thousand. 20000 um, if they go to the end, but maybe more if you hire a good law firm. But like the max you're going to spend is like forty or fifty thousand dollars during the arbitration. Then there's whatever the person wins. You don't know what that is. But if it's just one person, a billion dollar company is just looking at that, going, okay, just we'll deal with it. When you bring in, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people, it starts getting weight, and it starts getting to the point where you you are putting the same exact level of risk as a class action on them, except they have to go one by one and just keep doing these, doing these, doing these, doing these. It, it, it is very, something very much, they do not like dealing with this. Uh, it's it's sort of turning the tables. A lot of judges have sort of mocked companies that try, you know, what will happen actually very frequently is companies will do this. They'll say, you have to arbitrate, you can't go to court. And then when 
you know, three or 400 people come in and go, okay, <laughs> I'll do that. Then the company goes, no, 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 no. Oh, actually, I'd, I'd love to go back to court. Um, and then judges are, go, you know, you picked your poison and you're going to, you're going to eat this medicine that you wanted everyone else to take, right? The, it's, judges are not very fond of uh, people doing this. And um, there's some judges in the Northern District of California who've, uh, there's a judge who's going to, uh, poetic, I guess, in some of his opinions, he's been, you know, very, uh, I say that just, you know, flowery language about how uh, companies that do this, it was, it wasn't very, it was a different company, just, you know, don't expect me to have much sympathy for you, was the was short version of what that judge has uh, had said. So they get stuck in this arbitration with these mass arbitrations, and the consumers kind of as a whole are, you know, uh, all of your cases are separate, but um, the company has a lot of pressure on them because of how many people are doing it. And that's just how generally a mass arbitration works. So we took on all these consumers, just we had more people calling us than we could even take at the, at the sort of the height of it. And there's still people coming in. We're actually able to take uh, uh, ca cases on this. We were, our, our lines for like this period, our phone lines were so full and they're still flooded with all kinds of stuff, but they were, they were so flooded. We just couldn't even like just calls were going unanswered to nowhere. Um, even now we set up a messaging system now so that everyone, uh, you can, you get a text and you put a survey. And so if we miss something, we, we still get it and can still look at it. Um, but th that's how extensive this was, how many people were being injured by stuff like this. And I'll show you a couple other media things that have happened. You can see this is one of our clients who's in, from Atlanta who was interviewed on the local news. Uh, he won $11,000 in his arbitration around that amount. Um, and, uh, and that's his cut sort of uh, not including the attorney's fees and costs, just to be clear. Because sometimes, you know, when you see these numbers that attorneys toss around, um, sometimes those are numbers that they'll they'll give you the big number, but that also includes what the attorney was taking. Um, and there, there is, you know, these, these are cases where um, there's what's called a fee-shifting statute. And so part of what lets attorneys take consumer cases that sometimes are smaller value is that attorneys can... Uh, in addition to whatever your damages were, the the, the if you win in in the consumer case, um, in most not every state, but most states have laws like this. Texas for sure has a real good law called the Deceptive Trades Practices Act that we're using in our arbitrations. That says if you do anything deceptive, um, if if you uh, do anything unfair, unconscionable, then the to a consumer, just a regular person like you who's buying something, and that includes a car, then um, you get. A, a lot of rights, and one of those rights is the company has to pay your attorney's fees. So you, that doesn't sort of come out of your cut. It's separate. But so the 11000 number is what he won in an arbitration. We have another uh, a client who got a little over 19000 and that, again, is her cut, not talking about our fees. Um, and, and generally, it's, it's more honest, I guess, to tell people, like, if you're gonna, if the attorney's going to throw around those numbers to say, hey, here's what the person actually got, not, you know, inflating it so it sounds like you're getting more. Um, and those are two that went to the end of the arbitration. People, you know, if you settle a case like this, there's almost always a confidentiality clause, which means you can't talk about anything that happened in specific cases where, um, you know, people settled. Uh, but uh, those two went to the end of an arbitration and got an award. And if you do that, that's fair game to talk about. You know, th those are not confidential if the company decides to fight you to the end. And so people can get money in these uh, for, uh, you know, not having your car for a long time is pretty significant damages. And, and, and that can be a big deal to someone. Even if you end up getting your title, that doesn't mean that you weren't damaged. And this is one of our attorneys, uh, one of our associates, uh, Jarrett Faber from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, who got to get interviewed on the local news uh, because we had several uh, instances of local news coverage of our cases on this. Um, I, so, and we have attorneys in different states. Uh, I'm barred in Texas and California only. Um, we have other Jarrett's in Georgia. There's there, my partner Cyclone is Georgia and California. Yes, his real name is Cyclone, and it's a family name from a long time back when uh, one of his his grandfather, I think grandfather, was born in a hurricane in Oklahoma. Uh, so. Uh, so you could have a guy named Cyclone as your lawyer, potentially. <laughs> and, and, uh, but, we, you know, because rooms in Texas, you know, we're, we're doing the arbitrations there. That's where I'm licensed. Uh, and uh, not all the arbitrations, but most of them. And, and Texas has real good laws that, you know, govern room. The, the Deceptive Trade Practices Act that I talked about earlier. But there's also something, and most states have this too, it's called the warranty of title. So the warranty of title, a warranty is just sort of a promise that you make when you're selling something. Um, one of the, uh, it's, an, it's called an implied warranty, which means even if you don't say it, it's there. There's an implied warranty. By implication, if you're selling someone a car, you are promising to transfer them ownership of the car. That's, that's something just sort of assumed. And so that warranty exists if you're buying a car, which means if you promise someone ownership of the car by implication and then don't give it to them promptly, then 
you know, you, you get into warranty law issues, which we're also using as part of these arbitrations. So if you're one of these victims of Room or one of these other companies that have done, that haven't given people their car titles, uh, what can you do about it? Well, even if you've got an arbitration clause, that doesn't mean that you can't just go arbitrate and join in with the other people who are doing this. Certainly with Room, uh, we're still taking cases on that. Carvana and some states were taking cases as well. Um, and, uh, and in, you know, lo local dealers, uh, there's a lot of local dealers in states that our attorneys work in. There's some states where we partner with other attorneys um, where we'll go sue local dealers who do this. Um, and doing this helps stop it from happening. Companies were, were getting away with it because people were not suing. They were not going in and filing these arbitrations. And when you do, when, when you fight back, whether you ultimately got your title or not, if you had a long period where you didn't have it, you do have legal rights. There has been damage to you, and you can go do an arbitration, assuming you're still within the statute of limitations. Most people, you know, this was kind of happening a lot last year, um, and uh, so I think most people probably are still going to be in the statute of limitations for at least some of the claims. Depends what, you know, uh, can't promise that, but, the, you know, the faster you get on it, the more likely that you can get an attorney to represent you. Our firm still does, I know there's some other firms that have done smaller versions of this or taken on a few clients. Uh, our, our firm, you know, definitely has a lot of experience representing people against Vroom. Um, and so it, it's something that shouldn't happen. And as their CEO said, it shouldn't even happen once. So if you're someone who's been, who's had this happen to you, you know, you should at least look at it and look at what your rights are. Uh, you can look at our uh, law firm's webpage. It's linked in um, on the uh, pay, the front of my YouTube channel. If you want to go there, I'll put a link as well in the uh, the um, comments or description of this video. Newpercovey.com, K-N-E-U-P-P-E-R-C-O-V-E-Y.com, and that's got links to all the phone numbers and uh, where you can call, get a text form to fill out, and uh, give information if you're interested. And yeah, you you, you should. Do something about this this stuff and not just let it sit there. Because and especially if you don't have your title, I would say you've got to get an attorney to do something about that. If you don't have the title to your car, you can't let it sit there. And that goes for any car dealer. That is a problem that is so severe that um, you you just really need to get it addressed. Because if you if you're one of those people who okay you get in a car crash, what do you do when you just literally can't get insurance money for that? They, they, you you don't want to wait till that stuff happens till your car's sitting in an impound lot till uh, you've got a cop knocking on your window saying, uh, <laughs> title and registration, please, <laughs> and, and you don't have it. So definitely something to do something about.